Muscle cars are great. They're a great product, and it's quite a simple formula to be able to make one. You've got a dash of rear wheel drive, two doors, and a huge helping of V8 power at the front. It's really quite childish, kind of like the way that I'm sitting, but it's a great formula. Unfortunately, there's a bit of a rift in the automotive industry, a disease, an electric influenza, if you will, and it's reaching the muscle car industry. So the once proud Camaro is going to dwindle away into a vegan friendly electric four door sedan. The Challenger and the Charger, they're bidding their farewell at the end of 2023. And the Corvette spent a little bit too long on its semester abroad, traveling through Europe and came back with the engine in the wrong place. So it's really quite sad. And it seems like for us, the muscle car lovers of the world, there's not really much of an option left, but that may not be the case. This is the all new 2024 Ford Mustang Dark Horse, and it's a muscle car. But just to be sure, let's check off the boxes. Drive goes to the rear wheels only, check. There are only two doors, check. And under the hood, a big lumbering five liter naturally aspirated V8. No turbos, no electric motors, double check. It gets better too, because you see muscle cars don't have the greatest reputation when the going gets twisty. But in recent years, Ford has been challenging that stereotype with their recent Mustangs. Rather than just being muscle cars, they're becoming more of muscly sports cars. And this dark horse edition pushes that envelope just a bit further than the standard GT. Think of it as kind of like a new age Mach 1. The Dark Horse comes standard with Magna Ride dampers, both for the front and the rear, as well as a stiffer suspension setup with larger anti-roll bars. Where it would otherwise be an optional extra, this trim comes standard with torsion limited slip differential and Brembo brakes, 390 millimeter discs gripped by six piston calipers in the front and 355 millimeter discs gripped by four piston calipers in the rear. All of this means that the driving characteristics of this car are optimized for track use. It rides stiffer, it puts the power down better, and because of the way that these brakes are intended to perform, you can wait until the very last minute to take your foot off of the loud pedal. Then there's the engine, which arguably is the most important part of any muscle car. It's a five liter naturally aspirated V8, very similar to the one that you find in the standard GT, only just like the rest of the car, that engine has been tuned, modified, improved for on-track use. So it has forged connecting rods, very similar to the ones that you find in the previous generation of the GT500. Also to account for the more track-focused use that this car is intended to do, they've made some improvements to the camshafts as well as the balance of the crankshaft. The result, the Dark Horse makes 500 brake horsepower and 418 pound-feet of torque. There are two transmission options available, a Tremec TR3160 six-speed manual or the 10-speed auto that I have in this car, both of which have different gear ratios compared to the standard GT. 0-60 to 60 is done with in around 4 seconds, I've seen as low as 3.8 seconds with launch control, and all of this for a car with a starting MSRP of $59,270, nearly $10,000 less than the Corvette, which has less power and let's be honest, isn't really a muscle car anymore. The interior on the new Mustang is great. It's an all new interior because obviously this is an all new generation. And for the dark horse, straight away, there aren't too many huge changes that you'll notice. There's a dark horse badge on the dashboard there. These are optional Recaro seats, which look very good. And I think if you're going to dish out the extra money for the dark horse, I would option out for this lovely two-tone interior. I want the interior of my car to look a little bit more special. Also, there's dark horse badges on all of the screens, as well as on the door sills. So those are the obvious things. Other things that are great about this Mustang in general are all of the toys, all of the little features for you to play around with. It kind of goes along with the theme of this car really being a big childish purchase. So you have all of your track apps, acceleration timer, brake performance, lap timer. You even have a little drift brake function, which it tells you is really only for track use. And you have line lock. So line lock will lock up your front brakes so that you can do some gratuitous standing burnouts. Also, pretty interesting, the e-brake, it's in the style of a traditional e-brake where you 
just pull it up, but it doesn't function like one. You pull it up and it retracts back to its original position, so it is electronic in that sense, and if you want to turn it off, you hold your actual brake, push down, and it turns it off. It's really quite an interesting thing, and I like it. It's a bit of nostalgia, so every time you put it on the e-brake, it feels like you're ripping the e-brake. Some more goodies, you've got your auxiliary gauges, your G meter, which is great, your different driving modes. You can change them on the screen, or you can change them on the steering wheel with this mode selection button. And they've got the coolest different animations for each of the driving modes. It changes the color of the car. You've got a really cool animation that takes you around for track, sport, normal. You have a couple of different modes. You have normal, sport, track, drag strip, slippery, and then your custom mode that you can obviously customize and change things about. You also can customize to quite a large degree the sound that comes out of your exhaust. You have four different settings. You have your quiet mode, quiet exhaust, and that's for when you're leaving in the morning, you don't want to piss off your neighbors right up until you do your line lock in your driveway. You've got your normal mode, opens it up a bit more, sport, and then of course your track exhaust, which is going to make it the loudest. So I'll go through each one of those, do a little bit of gratuitous revving so you can see how they compare. Maybe a little bit of a criticism I have for this is this little central area. I know that in the last generation of this car, they had little switches, which I was quite a big fan of. On this one, they've put them all on the same piece of plastic. So when you push any one button, it pushes them all in. And I kind of wish that they were individual buttons. But other than that, at the price point that this car is sitting at, there's really not a whole lot for me to complain for on the interior. The screen is great. Everything is really nice and responsive. You can change all of your different cluster themes. You can do it manually if you wanted to, or you can just have it match your driving mode. And a really nice little gimmicky thing, you can actually choose the cluster design for the Fox body from 87 to 93, which is, it serves absolutely no purpose whatsoever, but it's just a cool thing to have. And muscle cars, above all else, are about being cool. I do have to mention my favorite feature on this car, and it's really the most useless feature that you can get on a car, but it's the coolest feature that you can get on a car. Now, I'm sure you've heard of being able to turn a car on from the key, which obviously this car can do, but Ford is taking it a step further. You can actually rev this car from the key just by pushing a couple of buttons. So first thing, you're gonna lock the car. So let's lock, that's great. Double tap on the button underneath. So now the car is on and that's great. So it's all locked up. We're gonna do unlock and lock. So that's just gonna let you know that it's primed and ready to rev. And then you do it one more time. <laughs> How cool is that? There's nobody in the car, but what it is is basically a pre-programmed sequence that Ford has put into the car so that you can rev it when you're not in the car whatsoever. And it's just the coolest thing ever. What are you ever going to use that for other than to make yourself laugh and piss off your neighbors? It's the best. I think that no matter what this car costs, that feature alone makes it worth it. It should be noted that this is the most performance-oriented version of the Mustang as I film this video, but it's all part of the direction that Ford is taking this new dark horse line with plans for six new racing Mustangs that will compete in series such as GT3, GT4, and NHRA Factory X Racing. There will also be road-going variants, the Dark Horse S and R, which will only get more extreme. But this is very important. I know that it sounds really silly, especially given everything that's going on in the world, but I'm not being intentionally obtuse. I'm actually being quite sincere. Because muscle cars, they're not just a product. It's not just a car, a way to go from point A to point B. It's a culture. I can't tell you how many people I've talked to that have grown up with fond memories with their dads, with their moms, with their families, growing up all centralized around a Ford Mustang, a Chevy Corvette, a Dodge Charger, whatever it happens to be. They're beautiful memories and it's all part of this 
thing that the world seems to just look at as a mode of transportation. With Dodge and Chevy getting rid of their muscle car lineage, Ford is really the only one that's putting a conscious effort into retaining the existence of that culture. And I really, I really appreciate that. I'm sure a lot of people do as well. And if this dark horse is a preview into what Ford is planning for the future of the Mustang, I'm very excited to see what comes next. But that's all for this video. Thank you so much for watching and much gratuity to Chino Hills Ford for loaning me this Mustang Dark Horse to do a video for you guys. This car is actually for sale right now and I'm told that this color isn't gonna be something that you can get very soon in the near future. So if you're interested, I'll leave the regular links as well as the link to this exact car for you to be able to check them out. And if you do, let them know that Car Cave sent you. Otherwise, leave me your comments below with your thoughts on the car, on the video, and please use it as a medium to share your favorite stories that you have maybe growing up with a muscle car. It doesn't have to be a Mustang, any muscle car will do. Like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon to show your support for the channel and so you don't miss a post. But until the next one, thank you so much for watching and take care.